In this video, we're going to explore an existing project in LabVIEW VI. We'll talk about the purpose of the LabVIEW project and VI in the development environment, differentiate between controls and indicators, and between different data types like numerics, booleans, and string data. To begin, we'll open the provided example project. We'll walk through the tree here in the hierarchy to see what's available in the LabVIEW project. The first item we'll see is the project with its associated name. Everything that we'll do in the project is contained within this item. Next, we'll see available hardware resources that are connected in our system. In this example, we have just our computer. Then we'll see things that are associated with this project on our hardware. We have one VI and one DACMX task. We'll talk more about this in a moment. If we expand the dependencies tree, we'll see a list of additional VIs and DLLs that this project is using. We can ignore these for now. We can also see a list of build specifications, which we'll also ignore for now. Let's open up the task first and see what that shows us. I'll double click and it'll bring up the DAC Assistant pop-up. This view is similar to the test panels and allows us to configure channels for data acquisition. The difference here is that we're setting them up for use in our software applications, not just for debugging and troubleshooting. To get insight into what's happening in this channel, we can make sure it's selected and click on details. You can see here that it's pointing at our simulated PCI 6221, the first channel, and we have it set up to acquire one sample on demand. I'll hit OK to close this window. I'll now open up the temperature acquisition VI. This may be your first view of what a LabVIEW VI looks like, so I'll go over the user interface. This may be your first look ever at a LabVIEW VI, so I'll go over what we're looking at here. This is called the front panel. This is what a user would interact with who is using your application. Since we're in the LabVIEW development environment, we have debug and development tools that are available to us that won't be available to your end users. You can see here the run arrow will allow us to run our program. The run continuously will run our program in a loop. If we hit the abort execution while our VI is running, it will stop all activities and close the program. Or we can pause execution at any point in our program's execution. For now, this description will be sufficient for this lesson. Now that I've got this VI open, I'm going to run it. Let's talk about what happened here. I ran the program. A current temperature was generated. It exceeded some threshold and gave us a message. If I change the threshold above the output value and run the program again, we'll see that the threshold was not executed and we get the message that the system is normal. Let's take a look at the code that generated this result. I can navigate to the block diagram or the source code view of our application by clicking Window, Show Block Diagram, or Control E. For speed, I always use Control E. The second window pops up that shows the code that drives the front panel. If I right click on any front panel interface item, I can click Find Terminal and it will take me to the block diagram element that controls that terminal. If I double click on this block diagram element, it will take me back to the front panel terminal. This is an easy way to go back and forth between the front panel and the block diagram and find things that you're looking for. You can see in this VI that we have one control and three indicators. A control is something that the user is able to manipulate on the front panel. Indicators are outputs from our program and are not user changeable. As well as the distinction between controls and indicators, we can make distinctions between their data types. This clearly here is a numeric or a number. This indicator is also a numeric or a number. This indicator here is a Boolean because it's either on or off. And this indicator here is a string, meaning that any arbitrary text can be input here. If we look at the block diagram, we can see controls and indicators in orange and their associated wires represent numbers. Green with these dotted lines represent Booleans, and pink with these jagged lines represent strings. If we're ever looking at the code and unsure of what something will do, we can always use the context help menu. You can open the context menu two ways, by clicking help and then show context help or control H. I always use control H because it's quicker. It will bring up this small menu here that explains what any item on the front panel or block diagram is and does. You can see if we hover over a controller indicator, it will give us some information such as its name and its data type. 
If we hover over a wire, we can see the data that's on that wire. If we hover over a VI, we'll be able to see an image of its front panel connectors, its VI description, and a link to get more detailed help. If I click on this detailed help link for any LabVIEW VI, it will bring up the HTML help document. This gives you a description of not only what the VI does, but what all the inputs and outputs are and their expected behavior. It's also possible to comment code in LabVIEW by leaving these notes. These notes are editable, and you can also create new ones by double-clicking anywhere on blank space. You're also able to draw lines between your notes and any specific front panel element. If I run this VI continuously and then click pause, it will automatically take me to the block diagram element that is going to execute next. If I click unpause, the VI will continue to execute. I'll go back to the front panel, abort this execution, and conclude this tutorial. In future tutorials, we'll talk about generating code and creating controls and indicators from scratch.